Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have a 1v1 on Kolotny Firma. Our heroes today are going to be Shitskoy. <laughs> Shitskoy, yeah, that's what we're going to call him. Shitskoy, playing for the Soviets. And his opponent is going to be Hushtat. These names, I mean, seriously, man, couldn't choose worse names for me. I don't even know how to pronounce them. Hush, Hushtat. Yeah, Hushtat, playing for the Germans. Uh, so yeah, uh, both players, uh, I checked and they're ranked around the 700s, uh, and yeah, so it's not going to be the highest level of play here, but it should be, uh, you know, decent and pretty well matched, so we should or hopefully will have a very good game in our hands, or evenly matched game is what I'm trying to say. So anyways, uh, shit's Koi getting himself what most uh, Soviet players do, and that is conscripts. Conscripts, 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 first conscript squad on the field, heading south to support his combat engineers. And the second Conscript Squad already hitting the field, running down that road, and again heading for the south. So sending all his units, at least the first three units, to the south. Uh, for Hushtad, we have Tier 1, like most Germans do. And getting himself Grenadiers. Two Grenadiers right now. Second Grenadier hitting the field right now. And all the forces for Hushtad are actually going to the north. We see the Pioneers going over here. And the Agrents are going in the same direction. Probably going to be going to a different point, I would assume. Uh, no, it looks like they all went there. I guess he was maybe expecting somebody to go for his fuel to try to deny it, but no, nothing there, so they're going to move along to the munitions point in the center. So the third conscript is being produced, going to hit the field in a second, and Hushtad is actually producing himself a third Grenadier squad. So no MG-42 yet for Hushtad. We shall see if he gets himself any MG-42s. MG-42 still very useful, still very valuable, but falling a little bit out of favor uh, recently to German players because of their recent, well, nerfs, to say <laughs> the least. I mean, it is rebalancing, but I guess you could call it a nerf. It's They're not useless. I mean, they're still pretty useful and pretty helpful, but, you know, not the, uh, the win button they were before. So, third concert squad for Shitstoy is going to the north. So, it is going to run into two Grenadier squads. One is up here on the victory point. The other one is just capturing the munition and actually going for the strategic point. So, it's going to run straight into those conscripts. And we now have ourselves the first engagement. So, conscripts and Grenadiers fighting it out. The conscripts uh, hesitate a little bit, go back and forth. So, the Grenadiers are now in light cover and actually getting the upper hand on these conscripts. Down goes one conscript. And a second Grenadier squad is moving in to support them getting a little bit of a flank, and these conscripts are now on a losing fight. They are moving away, it looks like they're not going to actually retreat. Down to four men, they move themselves, yeah, they are actually going to retreat. Down to three men on the retreat, might even lose another one to these Grenadiers, but they will make it out alive. Down south we hear another engagement, and that is combat engineers against uh, Grenadiers. The Grenadiers looks like they were just simply uh, queued up to capture territories, and they moved past the combat engineers. The combat engineers uh, were allowed to get themselves into cover. They're currently in light cover, but the Grenadiers are moving upon them, and, well, even with that advantage to start with, uh, combat engineers will lose to Grenadiers. Hands down pretty much all the time unless they have themselves a flamethrower and even then sometimes they can lose up north we see some conscripts jumping into that house while these conscripts over here taking the cutoff point for hutch tot this cutoff point isn't usually the one you see harassed that much we do see this one over here being the most harassable one and we now have an mg42 on the field for hutch tot very nice and that opened up on the conscripts taking that cutoff point but the conscripts managed to simply walk away without getting suppressed and are moving towards the munitions point Conscripts in that house do manage to force away that Pioneer squad. Uh, yeah, down to three men. And pretty much all the forces in the north do get pushed away. We do have a Grandier squad capturing the strategic point in front of Chitskoy's base. Man, these names are going to kill me. And it looks like they're going for the fuel. Interesting choice. I mean, you can easily get this cutoff point and deny the entire south to the player. But I suppose he wouldn't actually be denied forever because he has the victory point. He's capturing this munitions point and he has the other munitions points, which gives him an indirect path to actually capture or keep the fuel. But it would have been at least, you know, a temporary solution. But I suppose. The enemy is taking what we have so anyways, uh, Chitskoy taking this opportunity to recapture most of the map that he can. He actually has more than half the map of possession right now. We hear the conscripts opening up on the Grens down south. The Grens holding their position in the fuel. They will be able to capture it, although the conscripts are pushing forward. And Hutch Todd decides to just simply back away. 
Now, we do have a second MG42 on the field for Hutchstadt, so a little bit of a heavier investment into the Tier 1. We have one MG42 defending the cutoff point up north, and it is decently positioned. It's actually going to run into those conscripts once they capture that, if they do decide to go down. And we have another MG42 in this house defending the center, supporting a Grenadier squad, which is going to run into a conscript spot right now, so that MG42 will come in handy very quickly. We are being used by the conscripts. The conscripts will... Uh, they actually do have Molotov, so very nice. They actually do run past the arc of fire of the MG42, getting themselves behind the house, and they'll probably throw a Molotov. There goes the Molotov. Very nice. Actually hits that MG42. MG42 packs off and is going to leave the house, but it is not going to retreat. It didn't actually take that much damage, and the conscripts are forced off of the field by the pioneers and the, you know, combined fire of the other forces. It's very nice. No tech so far for Chitskoy, and we have a uh, medic bunker already on the field for Hutchstadt, so not bad considering his heavy investment in Tier 1, so that will allow his forces to come back onto the field stronger. Well, not stronger, but full strength. <laughs> uh, Would have been useful a little bit ago, because you can see this Grand Squad is at a half health and full, you know, fully at four men, so all four men are very weak in this squad, so they will die a lot faster in a firefight which they are right now against two conscript squads, so it is not going to go in their way. And down goes one of those Grants. Three Grants decide to just move away and are going to get themselves on the other side of the hedge to break the line of sight. Up north, Pioneers capturing that fuel point. And we now have a Mortar on the field for Hutchtot, so again, a very heavy investment into Tier 1. We shall see if that pays off. We do see Tier 2 being produced for Shitskoy. Let's see if he actually produces something from Tier 2 or is just using it as a stopgap. Some players do that, you know, Tier 2 and straight into Tier 3 without getting anything, anything from Tier 2, simply because it allows them to get AT guns, you know, later on if he needs to. It is a little bit more expensive, but, you know, uh, well, fuel-wise is what I'm trying to say. It's a little bit more expensive, but, you know, it gives you the option without having to back to it. Let's actually see right here if we can get the uh, cost. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Tier 1 for the Soviets is 40 fuel, and Tier 2 is 50. So, I mean, it's a 10 fuel difference. Not that big of a difference, but, you know, it is significant if you're trying to rush for something. Say if you're trying to go Tier 3 to get a T-70 out as fast as possible, th those 10 points of fuel, you know, are actually significant. But, you know, if you want to go for a more balanced situation, you go for Tier 2 and... Three, four, something like that. Stuff like that. But anyways, we'll see what they end up happening. Up north in the munitions point, we see pioneers running into it, right in between two conscripts. But for some reason, they are very bold, but they end up retreating after they notice their rig mistake. And there they go. Mortar on the field, taking some shots at the house. Very nice shot. Actually breaks a hole in the side of the house. Not a lot of damage to the units inside, but we now have three conscripts just standing there. Technically inside the house, but not really, you know, inside anything. Think that provides any cover, even though it does. You know. Anyways, Conscripts, ooh, very nice. Conscripts actually jump out of the house a split second before it collapses to that mortar. So very nice there. Conscript squad that was outside pushes forward and throws another Molotov on that MG42 in the house, finally managing to actually kill some of their members. But the MG42 does jump out and is going to retreat, get itself healed up by those medics, and back to full strength. As far as Shitskoy, he produced himself a Maxim machine gun, but that Maxim machine gun is currently in the front of his base, not actually doing anything. I guess a little bit of a missed rally point. There it goes, finally moving into the field. And uh, no medics yet. One thing to, remi to remember is you have the ability to set rally points. You just either use the, uh, the V or just click the icon, or I forget what it would be, uh, on without grid keys and set it, or simply just select the building and right-click, you know, somewhere in the map, and whatever unit you produce from that building will go straight there once it's produced, so you don't really have to, you know, go and select it back at base and then tell it to move out. It saves a little bit of time. Mines getting laid down all over the place for shit's quite very nice. We see two mines down south, those could come very handy later on. LMG Grants taking some shots at those combat engineers, doing some damage, but they continue to move on. We now... What the hell is that? Oh, flamethrower burst. Okay, that's <laughs> I, I was a little bit curious on that because there wasn't any Molotov potential down there. We have a Maxim machine gun and combat ready. engineers, but the combat engineers do have a flamethrower and they just simply set the bush there or the fence on fire. Up north we see... Oops, sorry. Up north. <laughs> a little bit of a misclick there. Up north we see movement from the conscript squads of Shitskoy. I would suggest to get himself medics. He does. But the 
medics now. Okay, good. Because his squads are a little bit uh, damaged right now, even though they're full strength. But has the medics, so no problem. A little bit of a passive type of play right now going on for Hutch. He is uh, standing back a little bit. We do see a Opal Blitz uh, truck by Hutch down in this point. He got himself a Doctrine, and that is the Assault Support Doctrine, which will allow him to get, to get those uh, Opal Blitzes and Strafe. It's very popular early on because it was, well, pretty OP. <laughs> the Opal Blitz gave you a lot of resources, basically. I think it doubled the resources of a point, so if you put it in a munitions point, it would be, you know, ridiculous amount of income. And then you could just simply spam strafing runs over and over and over, like back to back. Uh, but yeah, that's long since been uh, corrected and uh, fixed, so... Not a very widely used... Ooh, this is something quite annoying now. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna make it very nasty. So, a little bit of a uh, misplay there by Shitskoi. He got a little bit greedy trying to get rid of that MG42, you know, waiting for the flank on this one, but ended up losing a conscript squad, which, well, obviously it's not. But, you know, control is a little bit finicky sometimes, and you can't get them to react when you want to. Molotov landing in between the Grants and the Pioneers. The Pioneers have themselves a Minesweeper. Very nice there by Hodge getting a Minesweeper. You don't see those that often. And he knows that there's mines because he saw one laid down down there, but uh, wow, those grins are right next to it. So anyways, engagement up north, the uh, conscripts did end up losing that and having to retreat. And these grins, I do want to see if they actually run into anything. We have the Maxim machine gun down south and the grins are just moving south. They're going to this direction. Are they going to run into the mine? No, they actually just skirt past the mines. Just barely. Grants down south, getting caught by that Maxim machine gun. The Maxim machine gun suppresses them and pins them. Second Grant squad is moving up to try to get the flank. Can the Maxim machine gun turn in time? It is not being turned. There it is. No. Yes. No. No, it's not being turned. It is getting moved. Okay, well, the Grants are going to be able to get right on top of it. There are men on that squad that will shoot back, but... Oh, there's one guy, and he actually is going to get the pin down on that. Well, very nice. Very lucky there. Up north, Conscript is holding ground, not pushing forward. And we have an artillery field officer for Hutch Talk. Not a, uh, well, actually, we've seen them used a lot more often, but not with this doctrine. It's with the, uh, the newer doctrine, which is the one that gives you the Ostrupin. Uh, well, because it's essentially a grand squad with an officer. Maxim Machine Gun capturing the victory point down south. And we now have tier 3 for uh, Shitskoi. So yeah, he did go tier 2, tier 3, and is getting himself something. Oh, he was building it, but he hasn't actually finished building it. Interesting. Not sure if he's just he waiting to see by. if anything hits the field. We do have another Opal Blitz coming into the field. No additional tech for um, Hutchstadt just yet. He has tier 1 and tier 2. That's about it. A little bit of a passive play from both players, just leaving units all over the place capturing, but not continuing to push forward. Which is representative of the rank. I mean, like, it's not going to be the highest level of play, but, you know, both players are kind of sim doing similar things, so... Pretty evenly matched. Conscripts up north, throwing a nice Molotov on that Grand Squad, forces them away from that cover. They are down to about half health, but they do have veteran C2, and in veteran C2 they get increased armor, so they will, you know, take some shots nicely. Artillery field officer moving up against those conscripts. The conscript squad is now surrounded and it's about to retreat. Mortar taking some shots at something. Oh no. AT gun on the field for uh, for Shitskoi actually uh, barraging the house in front of uh, Hachstadt's base. Doing some good damage to the structure, bringing it down to less than half health but not collapsing it. And it looks like it might have done damage to the MG team but didn't end up killing anybody. German Mortar returning fire to the AT gun. The AT gun packs up and is going to back away. And yeah, more Opal Blitzes on the field for Shitskoi. One thing to keep in mind is you have the option for the Opal Blitz and you can also drop a uh, cache on top of it if you wanted to focus on a specific uh, resource. So anyways, finally the uh, Tier 3 gets uh, finished and we now have a T-34 hitting the field for Shitskoi. And there he is. Very nice. First armor on the field. And a T-70 to follow that up. So he did have a lot of fuel already uh, floating. So very nice. T-34 will hit the field pretty much in force. There isn't really much that can oppose it. Obviously, Kaiserfaust are a small threat. There's nothing on the field right now to follow up. There's a, there aren't even Panzer Grenadiers that can get Panzer Grenadiers to upgrade. 
Maxim Machine Gun down south doing some good damage. Actually, no, it's down in the center. Uh, Conscript down south actually doing some good damage to that uh, squad. Manages to get it down to one minute retreat. Maxim Machine Gun does pin down the Grenadier squad in the center and forces it off while the Conscript are just moving around. They are gonna move up north and jump over the fence, or wall that is, to get into that house. They will be able to open up on that MG42. While all the infantry, all the forces for Hutchstadt are currently in full retreat. T-34 down south, not exactly sure why it's there. And we have T-70 hitting the field and going to the north, just, you know, seeing what it can actually catch. AT gun taking some shots at those mortar teams and mortar team actually loses one more man on the retreat to two of the conscripts in that house. Conscripts in the house unfortunately are only three men so they're not able to output that much damage although there are only three windows in that side of the house so I mean I suppose they are outputting 100% of what they could in that situation. T70 heading into the center of the map might be wanting to go for the MG42. T-34 also moving up at the same time. They are going to run into all the infantry. Like I said, running the risk of getting fousted a lot. T-34 takes a shot and backs off. The T-70 is being quite passive. Not exactly sure why. T-70 is actually the ideal tank right now because it can do so much damage to infantry. Faust going off on the T-34 down south. Grenadier squad down to one man, but it manages to back it off. And the T-70 is currently backing off, uh, taking some shots at the Grenz, but again, all the Grenz do end up having to retreat. So very nice there. Full route for the forces of Hotshot, just to keep alive. And I never mentioned, but Hotshot, I mean, uh, Chitskoy, these names, um, selected his doctrine, and that is the Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics. That's why he asked himself, a Shock Rifle Squad hitting the field. Uh, up north, down south, here it is, there it is. T-70 down south, catching those pioneers in the open, taking some shots at them as they retreat. If he chases them, he could actually finish off the entire squad. Is he going to risk doing that? No, he is going to stay right there. And we now, oh my god, we now have Tier 4 on the field for Hotchtot, and he's getting himself a Panther. So, Shitskoy is getting himself a second uh, T-34. Which, while in theory, they should be boned and not be able to do much against the uh, the Panther. I've actually seen them be quite effective. I think I casted a game. Uh, well, I mean, I, I know I casted a game, but I'm pretty sure it's already out. Yeah, it should be out long ago. Um, where uh, T-34s actually got the crit on the Panthers every time when they use the ramming ability. It is a gamble, obviously, because it's not always going to penetrate, but... You know, it was kind of kind of funny. Anyways, conscripts up north getting uh, forced off of the field by MG42s, Grands, uh, shock troops pushing against a Grand squad, doing some good damage. Well, actually, not good damage, doing some damage, but yeah. Grand squad didn't actually take a lot of damage. And the Panther is now on the field, so the Panther is gonna go in force to the north, supporting his troops over there, expecting some type of armored response by Shitskoi due to the uh, massive amounts of infantry he is sending to the north. And he wouldn't be wrong, but the T-34 is still down south and the T-70 is in the center, not moving, so... Well, shock troops are gonna find out about that Panther very quickly. Oh, is he gonna go for the crush? Is he gonna go for the crush? Well, no, he actually just went to say surprise. Oh, I would've personally gone for the crush, but okay. T-70 running to the north trying to support these shock troops actually notices, oh, that's a panther, and he's trying to back away, getting caught a little bit in that ledge, and manages to back off out of sight from that panther. T-34 on the field is down south with its second T-34 buddy. If they actually go for it right now, obviously, you know, with a little bit more support for infantry, they could potentially take out that uh, panther quite easily, considering that there's now three T-34s on the field for Chitskoi. So he does have the upper hand right now in the numbers of armor. There's only one against, well, four, but T-70 can't really count in there. <laughs> can't really do much. Um, so T-70 is heading straight into the enemy base. He's going to run into that uh, Opal Blitz truck. Going to take it out very easily. Opal Blitz truck going to go down. And... There it goes, 300 manpower down to drain for uh, Hutchstadt. And we see MG-42 shooting at the Grenadiers down south. 
So that might have been a bait. We see the panther moving a little bit down south, but not all the way. And doesn't look like it's stuck. But at least he got an open blitz. Could have potentially pressed on a little bit forward, taking some shots at that mortar, trying to force a response from Hutchnot, but it didn't work out. Conscripts in the church, taking some shots at those drents as they move. Nice rifle late going into the church. Actually misses. Interesting. He's having taking some shots at those grants, not actually doing much. Second rifle nade going in, getting one of those conscripts, but again, not a lot is happening. Artillery barrage from the AT gun, very nice, gets two of those grants, but they both move out of the way, and they now should be fine. Grandier spot coming up behind the church, taking a beating. And the Panther is going straight into the center, taking some shots at the T-70, and the AT gun sets up to take a shot at it. We have T-34s behind it. Can he actually get the ramp on the Panther? Go for the ramp, go for the ramp. T-70 getting hunted down by that Panther. Will the Panther be able to take it out? Very nice shot, gets the main gun. Get a ram off, no, come on. Uh, the T-70s still there, gonna get cleared out though. Panther decides that it doesn't want to deal with it. Ram, 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 come on, use the ram ability. No, no, you were already behind it. I do not agree at all with the course of action here that Shitskoi decided to take. Panther was already well in your sector of the base. You had three tanks to one. He was exposing his rear armor to your T-34. You could have very easily gone for the ramp. Got in the crit on the rear armor. Disabled that T-34. I mean that Panther. And taking it out. Second Panther is now getting produced. The original Panther is just moving back to the base. It's going to get repaired very easily. And I think this is going to come back to bite Shitskoi in the ass. Incendiary Barrage going down to the center of the map, doing a lot of damage to the Grens. One Gren squad down to one man, the other one down to two. Conscripts do not manage to actually get the uh, the kill on that squad. Land a nice uh, Molotov on the uh, Mortar squad, burning two of them alive. And they do pack up and retreat, manage to make it out of the flames. And the uh, injured Panther is still just on the field, taking some shots at the Conscripts, forcing them off of the field. So a fourth T-34 is getting produced for Shitskoi, so he still has the upper hand as far as the armor goes. Because, again, if he uses that ram ability, which is right there, he can potentially disable both Panthers and finish it off with the other T-34. But, considering he had a three-on-one opportunity and he did not go for that, something tells me he's not actually going to go for it. So up north we see Chonk Troops just capturing territory, nothing really up north for Hutchcott. I don't know how he even got to that type of name, but Hutchcott, uh, MG42 just set up defending the fuel and the pretty much entire approach here. Very nice setup there, but a little bit of a passive use of MG42s for Hutchcott, just using them, well, in a very defensive manner. Second MG42 over here, not risking the house because it's so low in health. Panther hitting the field and the other one getting repaired. And down south we see the artillery field officers just captured the turret. Another incendiary barrage for Hutchstadt in the center of the map trying to deny that victory point. Still trying to go for the victory point win or advantage I suppose. Points wise we have 384 to 257. That is in the uh, favor of Shitskoi. But um, that could very easily get turned around. So Nothing to... Uh, count on so far. Mine over here did get detonated. Other mine down south is still in position. The enemy has taken our supply sector. And we see, and we see Shitskoi is still building more T-34s, getting himself a fifth one and a brand new concept squad to replace his current losses. AT gun taking some shots at the center victory point, trying to get those grants that uh, the captain. But the grants are getting shot by the Maxim machine gun. They don't actually get pinned down, they only get suppressed. Nasty shot there by the Panther, actually nails one of the uh, combat engineers. The combat engineers decide to just back off. AT gun finishes, it br finishes its barrage in the center, while the Grants did not actually manage to capture the point. Maxim machine gun pushing back to the car, and it will not actually be... No, well, it actually does shoot one of them. Managed to get a suppression. Can it get down the pin? No, the uh, Grenadiers do manage to get out of the uh, arc of fire, but they do end up having to retreat anyways. T-34 is down south, they move all four in unison, trying to catch that Grand Squad and the Artillery Field Officer, but they don't actually manage to do so. 
both Panthers are now going down south on the hunt for the T-34s. And the T-34s are backing up. There is one with a damaged engine, which will not be able to get a ram off and will get sniped off by both Panthers. It's getting left alone by the other T-34s. Go for the ram. You need to go for the ram, but no, he's not going for the ram. He's going for the ram now. And he actually only gets his crew shock. And that is the problem with rams. So this uh, T-34 is now screwed. The other T-34s are moving in to support. Getting some shots off on the Panthers, but the Panthers are just simply shrugging those shots off. Need to get in behind this. This one was coming up to get a nice flank. Second ram goes off and manages to actually get the main gun destroyed and the damage engine. Other T-34 needs to ram this other one and use the last one for... No. No, no. We still have two T-34s. Disable the last one. Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure what the thought process here is for Shitskoy. One more T-34 down, so two of them down, and he's not really doing a lot of damage to this disabled one. And this one that took a lot of damage didn't get rammed, and is going to make it back out alive. So, another heavy loss here for Shitskoy, losing two of his T-34s. Um, no, three of his T-34s, correction. Uh, four T-34 moving up, taking some shots from the Panther, taking some shots at the MG-42, trying to actually dislodge it, but the MG-42 just continues to stay there on the field. And the uh, Panther getting shot at by the AT gun. The AT gun actually has been used pretty, uh, well, usefully, I guess I could say. Rather well is what I'm trying to say. It's been used uh, correctly, been used effectively, and has been doing a lot of damage to those tanks, but the T-34s are not being managed quite as they should. So T-34 does manage to push off the infantry. We have a half track on the field for Hutchstadt, which is way, way up front in front of the T-34. It's going to get itself killed. It does do a lot of damage to that maximum machine gun, but down goes that uh, T that half track to the T-34. And the AT gun is still there getting ordered by the uh, German forces. So a third Panther is now getting produced for Shitskoy. And... I think we can easily see now the problem with not being aggressive with the T-34s. T-34 down south is getting repaired. It's only getting repaired by two uh, combat engineers, so it's going to take a while for them to get repaired. Second uh, combat engineer squad wouldn't be a bad thing to produce for Shitskoy in this situation, considering he has a lot of tanks and two repairs faster want? than one. Talk troops up north getting pinned down by the MG42. They actually managed to decap the point, so it breaks the line of sight of the MG42, so they will be able to get back up and finish capping that um, fuel point. So, map wise, Shitsko is still in a pretty good position, but with that third Panther hitting the field right now, I said, wait, hold on. There we go, right now. <laughs> uh, that is actually going to be a very difficult thing to deal with. Both Panthers currently getting repaired. Actually, only one getting repaired. Both players actually just choosing to stay with stick with one uh, repair unit, which I am not entirely sure why that is the case. Considering the amount of tanks they have, two Pioneers and two Combat Engineers would be, you know, advice. <laughs> but, well, that is currently the case. So, brand new Panther goes straight onto the field. It's going to get shot by the AT gun and T-34. T-34 is going to die to that Panther. Really not much you can do about it. It is going to ram it. Gets the side armor. Very nice. Actually, finally, it does the correct thing. And the AT gun should be able to clear off that Panther. Turn this AT gun around and shoot it in the face. And there it goes. Finally, a nice victory there for Shinsuko. A one-to-one -one trade trade for a T-34 for Panther is always going to be preferable. Always. If you can do that, always get it. T-34 down south finally back in action. So at least he has one. But he, that one T-34 is going to have to face off against two Panthers, which still getting repaired very slowly. So there we go. Second Pioneer on the field for Hutchstadt. So he finally thinks of you know, the correct situation there and is going to get those Panthers back on the field quite quickly. This one should be done in you know, probably a minute, and the other one will take a little while, but no, it should be that much. But yeah, I mean, losing a T-34 in exchange for a Panther... Really couldn't ask for more.
well, I guess you could ask for the fact that the T-34 takes the Panther on a one-on-one -on -one and does that. But, you know, that is probably never going to happen. I gotta say, though, nice uh, mineage from Shitskoi. Very defensive mining, you know, back in his own territory, but a lot of mining, so, you know, that's always going to help out. Mortar taking some shots at something. I'm not exactly sure what. Shots up north? Yeah. Shock troops uh, up north going for the victory point, getting supported by that T-34. Unfortunately, the T-34 is on its own, so a Panther by itself, especially with a shock troop since it can't really do anything against the, the, uh, the Panther, is not actually going to be a favorable fight. Grandier squads are engaging those shock troops. Nice nade on that Grand squad, does some good damage. T-34 moves into support. But here comes the Panther. The T-34 can't really do anything. The T-34 is going to back off and run away. And the Panther is just simply going to chase it down. The Panther can't afford to chase it down. There is nothing the T-34 can do against that. And there goes the ram. But what what is that going to accomplish? The dead T-34? That's it. No support. No AT-8s to follow up. Get some damage. No AT guns in the area to support it. No second T-34 there to get the damage into the, the Panther. So why he didn't go for the ramming back here in the three-on-one engagement, I have no idea. Send the Barrage landing right on top of the area, trying to dissuade these Grenadiers from throwing their Faust. One Grenadier squad does end up retreating. Second one just simply moves out of the way and will be able to get a Faust off. Although the other Panther just moves into the zone and eliminates the T-34. So two Panthers against nothing. The Panthers are now a little bit less useful because they are essentially designed as anti-tank tanks. But I suppose they still, you know, do the job at supporting infantry. They have that MG-42, the LMG or machine gun up top. Uh, and, you know, they'll still be useful. They're not, they're not completely useless, like, say, an SU-85. <laughs> so, a little bit of a tough spot here for Shitskoi. He gets himself a third AT gun because he wants to be able to, I guess, deter the, uh, the tanks, which is fine, because otherwise the tanks would just simply run into his base and, well, kill everything, put it nicely. IS-2 tank now being produced for Shitskoi. Very nice with his uh, doctrine allows him to get that. Would have been nice to have that with a, a T-34 on the field. You know, go, f go for the ram on the T-34 and just have the IS-2 finish off the tank. But he can still produce one later on. IS-2 is going to be on its own, but as long as it's supported by those AT guns for the meantime, should be fine. But yeah, I personally suggest that he... You know, be not as aggressive with the IS-2 because the Panthers can very easily take out the IS-2, especially with their speed, they'll be able to get behind it. Uh, even if it has a turret, you know, shooting at the rear armor is what I'm trying to say. More incendiary barrage landing by Hutch Todd and uh, just denying territory as often as he can. Not bad there. Constant pushing up north, getting shot by that Panther. The IS-2 is nearby, but it is in no position to help. And it decides to back off back up, that is, and support with its ass. Pioneers pushing forward against the conscripts and taking a shot by the IS-2. The IS-2 actually misses. AT gun up north for support. And we have the Panther going for the IS-2, and it notices that there's an AT gun and decides, you know what? I shall hold off and come back another day. Although, no, he's actually still going for the AT gun. He's gonna go get behind the AT gun. The IS-2 is derping around, not it has its rear armor turned to the enemy. Oh no. IS-2 takes a nice shot at that Panther, gets some good damage in there. But the AT gun is now turned around, not supporting the IS-2. We have a second AT gun up north, taking some shots at these Panthers. The Panthers are betting, getting very heavily damaged by the IS-2 and AT gun, exposing its rear armor. But the IS-2 is just moving so much and turning around. This turret is very slow to turn, so it doesn't actually manage to get too many shots off on those Panthers. Pack gun getting produced for Hutch Todd, so it looks like he wants his own type of deterrent there so that the Ice 2 doesn't move into his base. And we see Chalk Troops and Combat Engineers just capturing territory down south. So, for the most part, Shitskoi still has the advantage in territory. He is now up to 75 fuel. And yeah, I mean, again, I would suggest a T 34 just to have that as a, well, battering ram if you can get it and disable one of the Panthers. The Ice 2 can take it out very quickly. And, you know. Get yourself a nice win there. Grenadiers going down south, capturing territory. We see an engagement in the center. LMG grants against flamethrower equipped combat engineers. Flamethrower is doing some damage to the Grenadier squad, but the Grenadier squad is veteran C3. And it's going to do a lot more damage to a vanilla um, 
Combat Engineer Squad, and we now see a strafing run getting called in by Hutchstar, doing a lot of damage down to one man on that Combat Engineer, but he does manage to retreat. Shock troops do end up getting pinned down and are getting mortared by the German mortar. And an MG-42 up north set up to stop that uh, strategic point from getting captured, thus end up forcing away the uh, Conscript Squad. IS-2 up north still not repaired. We need to see some combat engineers going up there. The combat engineers for Shit Square are barely getting back to base, so they should get healed up, reinforced, and sent up north to re repair that uh, IS-2. And we have a second shock troop squad hitting the field for Shit Square. Shit Square now has enough fuel, so again, I would suggest the T-34 to support his IS-2. It's not the worst choice. And you know, if you can bait those Panthers, get a ram in, Pretty good. Southern point, we see the Grenadiers getting incendiary barraged, and they are trying to crawl out of the fire. No, they're trying to stay in the fire. There they go, they're moving. They skirt right past the a mine, so very lucky there. And they're going to be fine in capturing that point. Artillery field officer over there, just moving around the zone. And we see shock troops moving to the south to engage those troops. <laughs> Artillery field officer hits the mine. One of the men there actually dies, but not much else. And the shock troops continue to push forward, and they weren't going to run into two squads, which is not going to be the ideal situation for them. Center of the map, we see MG42 opening up on Conscript. The Conscripts are in light cover, so they should be able to, at the very least, deep have the point. They do get better in C3 at that situation, and they uh, increase durability, so these Conscripts are going to be quite durable and quite useful. Eyes 2 up north getting repaired by the combat engineers. And the shock troops did end up actually winning the fight down south. Taking fire! Sorry about that, had to sneeze. And uh, center of the map, we see the uh, Maxim machine gun also set up right outside of the range of the MG42 actually. Get some mortar shot to the face. So, oh, very nice rifle laid down to two men on the Maxim machine gun. More mortar rounds landing all on top of them. Maxim machine gun will end up retreating. And the AT gun actually artillery barrages the MG42. Can he actually land the shot? He did get rid of the heavy cover, but the shots are flying wide and they don't actually manage to hit anything. AT gun getting bombarded by the mortar, decides to back away. Can he make it out alive? It looks like he's going to be able to make it out alive. Up north, we see the Panthers pushing forward against the IS-2. It looks like the IS-2 is again pushing forward itself. Going to take some shots from the AT guns. Nice shot there by the IS-2. Actually gets a crew shock on the uh, on the Panther. The AT guns are set up a little bit further back, so they're not able to support this fight. But the IS-2 continues to shoot, getting some nice shots in there. But the Panthers are able to shoot the IS-2. There goes the Blitzkrieg. They're going to get themselves behind that IS-2 and get on the rear armor. The IS-2 is very slow to turn its turret. AT guns are going to keep shooting the Panthers, but I think the Panthers might be able to finish this IS-2 off well before they get heavily damaged. AT guns really doing the brunt of the work right now. They're doing some good damage to these uh, Panthers. Another shot by the IS-2 actually shocks the crew on this Panther, doing some good damage. AT gun turns around to take a shot at the other Panthers. The IS-2 now down to about 75% health. Another shot goes onto the Panther, gets a crew shock on that. AT guns continue to shoot on the Panthers, and the uh, Panthers are getting mauled by both AT guns. And pack and there it goes, main gun destroyed on that Panther. But the Panther is going to make it out alive. The pack gun does move up and take some shots at the IS-2. The IS-2 will take some heavy damage, and the mouse goes off on the IS-2 by that Grand Squad and actually gets damage on the engine. The pack gun will continue to shoot at the IS-2 and it's not going to be able to get out of there in time. I think it's going to die. Down goes the uh, the Grand Squad that shot that uh, that Faust. But with the pack gun right outside of its range. Oh, the gunner does get killed on that Panther. Can the Panther finish it off? Panther taking some shots by the AT gun. The AT gun is going to take another shot. Can he finish it off? Ooh, very nearly, but doesn't actually finish off the work. So, very nice engagement up north. Very risky there by Hutchtod. Very uh, lucky there for Shinsuke that he didn't lose his IS-2. Needs to get those engineers up north and repairing very quickly. Very, very now. <laughs> AT gun taking some artillery shots at the pack gun. Does some good damage down to about two men, but the pack gun does manage to move out of the way. Uh, the Pios for... Hutchstad doing very uh, fast work and getting the Panther back to full strength. 
And I mean, I suppose his second ice too would really be the, uh, the worst thing. He's very nearly there for the uh, for the fuel. So I suppose that could work. So, anyways, shock troops and the artillery field officer engaging in the front of Hutchstadt's base. Third Panther getting pr produced for Hutchstadt. Another Constant Squad getting produced for Shitsko. It's just to replace his infantry. And the shock troops are forced away by Panzer Grenadiers for Hutchstadt. Very nice. So he lost all his Grenadiers, so he decided to get a Panzer Grenadier Squad to replace that. We do see an LMG. Or, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, L LMG 42 uh, dropped down. down uh, bleh, dropped up north. And we have a decrewed AT gun for Shitskoy up north as well. So the map, the Panther is now back to full strength and heading in to support his uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers getting suppressed and probably pinned down by the Maxim Machine Gun. The Maxim Machine Gun not actually able to get the pin down just yet. They are simply suppressed. And we have a another half track on the field for Hutchstadt. So he does want to have a half track simply for the reinforcements on the field. So not a bad choice there. Just needs to be very careful with it and not running into the middle of a fight, you know, where there's tanks. Panther pushing forward, forcing away the Maxim machine gun. Not exactly sure why the Maxim machine gun retreated. I suppose it could have gotten run down. AT gun trying to go down on the um, on the Panther. It does go down, but doesn't really manage to do much. And the uh, second Panther that just got produced hits the field and supports over here. Other Panther over here again repaired. This Panther now veteran C2 it. Veteran C2 it get, reduces the damage taken. So this one is going to be a B oh, to take out. And we now see these Panthers coming in for the flank on this Veteran C3 uh, AT gun. The Veteran C3 AT gun will get cleared out, which is quite unfortunate. At Veteran C3, it increases the weapon damage against armor. So it does a lot of damage, especially the Panthers. Very nice. I mean, look at that damage go down, actually. One shot did so much damage there. This AT gun needs to stay alive. Merge it with these guys if you need to, but that Veteran C is so vital. Look at that damage go down. IS-2 still on the field, taking some shots at the Panther. Can he actually finish it off? The Panther is very fast. AT gun needs to turn around and might be able to take a shot at the Panther as it moves. But I don't think it will be able to do so. Panther might even be able to take it out. Can he take it out? Yeah, he takes it out. That is an unfortunate loss. Vet 2 AT gun though still on the field, so it would be able to, you know, do something. IS-2 moving into the center of the map, trying to clear off that Panther. Can he actually get the shot off? He is turning his gun. Can he get the shot? There we go. Very nice shot by the Ice 2. And down goes the Panther. So now there's only one Panther. I mean, two Panthers on the field to worry about. One of them is Veteran T2 and moving down south. The other one is very heavily damaged somewhere up north. There he is. Cindier Barrage is landing up north and doing some damage. We have combat engineers moving. Conscripts. Veteran T3 conscripts. These guys should pick up this LMG if they can. IS-2 moving down south against the artillery field officer. It's going to shoot the officer in the face. And then shoots another guy. Panther taking some side shots on the IS-2, doing some good damage. The IS-2 is in a little bit of a tough spot. It's turning its gun still against the officer for some reason. Not exactly sure why it's focusing on that. The IS-2 is now just continuing to move around. Take a shot off on the... There he goes. Shot goes off on the Panther, but the Panther just simply shrugs it off. More shots landing all over the place. Panther gets uh, reduced damage taken at Veteran 2. Damage engine now on the IS-2. This Vet 2 Panzer is actually going to take out that IS-2. There's no way that IS-2 is going to make it all out for this one. A little bit too aggressive with the IS-2 there. I suppose he can't get himself another one once this one dies. Nice shot there by the IS-2. Actually gets a crew shock on that Panther, giving the IS-2 a little bit more breathing room. But gonna go down anyway so there it goes can he actually get a shot off he does get a second shot off on the panther but doesn't actually do anything and the panther now gains veteran c3 increasing its weapon damage so this panther is an ace now it can essentially kill anything on the field panzer warfare on the field for uh hutch taking some shots at the conscripts the conscripts who ended up getting that uh lmg combat engineers okay well I suppose it's okay if you're going to deny it to your enemy, but better than, better than C3 concert squad would have been a better chance. <laughs> Vet 3 Panther mauling a Vet 3 uh, AT gun. The AT gun does take a nice shot at the Panther, doing some damage, bringing it down to about 60% health maybe, but uh, that AT gun is in a lot of trouble. Now to 
man, I don't think he's gonna be able to make it out alive. Second AT gun does set up and take some shots at the Panther, but the Panther does manage to decrew that AT gun and will just simply move along. Because even if it gets recruited, it's already done its job, and that is to deny the uh, the veteran scene, remove the veteran scene, which is so strong on those AT guns. Maxim machine gun ripping the artillery field officer apart. Down to one man, pinned down. Can he actually finish it off? It does finish off the artillery field officer. So nice victory there for Shitskoy. A lot of heavy uh, losses there for um, Hutchnot. And he immediately calls in another artillery field officer because he can. Strafing run getting called in by Hutchnot. Does pin down those conscripts, doing a lot of damage to them. And the Panther just turns around and faces its guns to them. Both the uh, coaxial gun on the turret, the uh, hull machine gun, and the machine gun on top. They're doing a lot of damage there. And uh, yeah, forces away that concert spot. Engineer standing by. A little bit of a lull in the fight. Let's see. Soviet infantry pushing to the north. There's still a Panther there getting repaired. We have a uh, half track in the zone for reinforcements. And Chakra down there. We see an incendiary barrage getting called right on top of the victory point once again. Shitsko is trying to actually go for the victory point win, and he might be able to do it. Uh, Hush Todd is down to 60 points. He himself is still at 315, and he has a lot of infantry on the field compared to, uh, to Hush Todd. Uh, okay, shock troops having to run through the fire of their own incendiary barrage, doing taking a lot of damage. AT gun getting assaulted by a squad, or a, uh, yeah, a uh, grenadier squad with only two men, but the uh, men on the uh, AT gun can't really do much to fight, apparently. Combat engineers. Panzer Werfer getting chased away by a squad of combat engineers. Not exactly sure how they managed to pull that want, off, comrade? but they did. And we still have that MG42 and the infantry controlling the northern point, which uh, is going to put a double cap, two to one, on against uh, Shitskoy. So he's going to start blading some points now. Maxim machine gun taking some shots at the Grenadiers. Although can't actually see themselves anymore. So combat engineers going behind enemy lines they are going to run into uh grenadiers the grenadiers might you know get killed by the MG, by the flames but no they're actually going to be fine mortar and mg42 still on the field currently decrewed for shitskoi so he could actually recruit that with the manpower that he has just simply use grenadiers and the half track that he has on the field right now to simply reinforce on the fly not wanting to do that though AT gun on the field still, uh, I mean, uh, coming onto the field, that is. Do we have any decrewed guns? We have this one up here, and that's it as far as I can tell. Well, we have a pack on as well. Panzer Warfare taking the shot at the center. Oh, very nice shot there by the Panzer Warfare. Kills out an entire conscript squad. That was a very nice artillery barrage right there. Where was that Panzer Warfare? It was right there. So, yeah, the shots were going to be quite a... Uh, Concentrated and one rocket actually took him out completely. Very nice. Actually, the first kills it looks like that the Panzer Warfare got. So, yeah, must be feeling pretty good there. So, Shitskoy now in a little bit of trouble, not actually managing to get the uh, the victory points. Conscripts at uh, 3 Ura in forward to get a Molotov off on that MG42. Does actually manage to get that Molotov off of the MG42. Is currently supported by a half track and a panther, so the men on that gun are getting reinforced as they die. So the MG42 will still stay there. Uh, the grenadiers, I mean the combat engineers, are going to be able to capture that point. We see the Panzer Warfare taking another artillery barrage there and doing a lot of damage to those uh, combat engineers down to one man on the retreat, but they do actually manage to make it out. And they do get that point, so again, the bleed is in the favor of Shitskoy. He is going to start taking away, but the MG-42 is right there and will be able to stop that bleed quite quickly. Maxim machine gun and artillery guns getting set up in the center. And we have another IS-2 on the field for Shitskoy. If he uses this one correctly and properly, he might actually win the game right here. Center of the map, we see the 
combat engineers going for the cap on that victory point. The Panzer Warfare is moving down south, and a Tiger has just hit the field touch shot. That is excellent. It's exactly what he needed because the Tiger is very good at anti infantry as opposed to the Panthers. And currently, the Panthers don't actually know that they have anything to fight against. Combat engineers taking some shots by that Tiger. Can't they actually stay in the pocket and get that point? They do. And they end up retreating right away. So again, bleed is... Wait, no, actually, it's not in the favor of Shinskoi. We see a Pioneer Squad down south actually going for the decap on that point and going for the cap themselves. So the bleed is still in nobody's favor. Shock Troops do manage, plus the IS-2 actually managed to get the, uh, the point back in their favor. And... Center point is in the favor of Shitskoi, so he will be able to start the bleed once again in a second. This AT gun, however, is going to get cleared out by both the Tiger and the Panther. Bet 3 Panther doing a lot of damage. And down goes that AT gun. IS-2 does move up to try to support, but the AT gun is now decrewed, so the IS-2 is in a very tough spot because it can't get surrounded. So it decides to back off. Victory point is going to get capped by Shitskoi for a brief moment. We have another constant spot up north getting the cap. The MG42 is almost decrewed completely. Can they actually finish it off before it gets reinforced? It looks like they're not going to be able to finish it off. Down goes one guy, down goes an eight, and down goes the MG42. So this victory point is going to get captured down to 47 points for Hutchstadt. Can he finish off the game right now? That is the question. Down south, we see the Tiger and the Panther moving down south against those shock troops. And up north, we have the... Panther and the half track against the conscripts. The conscripts decide to retreat, and the shock troops are staying. They're not exactly sure why the conscripts retreated. They didn't need to in the face of a panther. The panther isn't going to do a lot of damage to them that quickly, so they can't stay there for a while. Down to 35 points for Hutchstadt. Can he finish off the game? The Shitskoi, that is. Center victory point currently controlled by artillery field officer, and we now see a grenadier squad going down south. They're going to be able to capture that point and stop the bleed again for at least a little while. Very intense game for both sides at this point. It is getting desperate for both players. Both desperate for Shitspa because he wants to get those victory points to get the win. And desperate for Hutchstadt because he's so close to losing. That is 30 points left for Hutchstadt right now. He did stop the bleeding and he's actually going to be able to get it back in his favor. IS-2 getting flanked, however, by the Panther and the Tiger. Well, the Tiger does have a damaged engine. Looks like it ran over the mine, so this might be exactly what the IS-2 needs. Although the IS-2 exposes rear armor to the Panther. The Panther is the veteran 2 3 one It has a couple IS-2s in its belt, and down goes another IS-2 to that Panther. Six vehicles destroyed to this Panther. Six vehicles. I can guarantee you this was the original Panther. And like I said, I I, I told Shitskoi that was going to come back and fight him in the ass. Anti-tank gun, Anti gun getting called into the field for Shitskoi because he has tanks in front of his base. And he now has no infantry on the field, so this is not a great situation. Chargers retreating, we see conscripts pushing forward. Do they actually... Did they throw an 18-8? No, they did not throw an 18-8. Tiger moving very slowly up to the base, supporting. He has a heavy engine damage, so it's moving very, very slowly. And we have combat engineers just moving onto the field. Looks like they're trying to go for the victory points, but we now have two Panthers in the field for Shinskoi. The AT gun is now getting flanked. It does turn its gun to phase that Panther, but once again, the Panther just moves out of the way. Panthers are very, very fast tanks. They are quite capable of circle strafing. AT gun sits up in a very nice angle against both Panthers, gonna be able to get some shots off. But it looks like they're actually gonna die before they get a shot off, so no more shots for Shitskoi. And now with two Panthers in his base, he was so close to victory, he is going for the victory points. Look at that right now. They got one point up here, a one-man Grenadier squad going for this point right here. We see that uh, Hutchstadt is apparently going for the victory. No. Up north, we see the point getting decapped. And down south, we see Grenadiers moving into the zone. They will be able to stop that Grand from that combat engineer from capping. It does retreat. Can he make it out alive? He barely makes it out alive. And the center victory point is now for Shitskoi, but the northern one did get taken out. Shock troops, conscripts still in the base, getting battered. The tears for Shitskoi getting destroyed. Yeah, I think this is it. I don't think there's anything you can actually do about it. Grand <laughs> combat engineer running into the base in between all three tanks. 
doesn't actually even make it back to the base before it's killed off. Shockdrift pushing to the north, trying to actually stay in the game and get those victory points. He is down to 25 points. Touch shot, that is. But he has nothing on the field to finish it off. We have Shock Troops down south with a combat engineer trying to capture that point. Can he actually finish it off? The Shock Troops are getting... Well, they do actually get a kill on a Grenadier squad, so very nice there. They're going for the cap. Up north, we have the Maxim Machine Gun trying to cap that point, but it is getting uh, smoked. <laughs> so they're not able to do much. Uh, Bet 2 Shock Troop moving up, actually going there. We're going to see the... Um, HQ being killed for Shitskoi. We shall see if that actually causes the game to end. This construct squad is still back at base. Not exactly sure why it's doing that. Well, it's now gone, that is. And the base sector is going to go down. This is going to give this sector special ability, which is combat engineer reinforcement. And... Yeah, it looks like that actually killed them. Interesting. Well, I didn't know that... I mean, I hadn't actually seen it, so I wasn't aware that Annihilation actually uh, existed, even though it's not a game mode that you can select right now. So, yeah. Very uh, interesting game. Uh, I think it all came down to the decision here where Shitskoi didn't go for that Panther when he had a 3-on-1 advantage. A Ram would have disabled the Panther, the, the other two T-34s could have killed it off, and he, he was so close to his base he could potentially even save the third T-34. But, well, that never happened, and yeah, he ended up getting killed completely. And very close to victory, 25 points. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.